I made a mistake. And it's not because I spent the last five months of my life getting re-addicted to old school RuneScape and watching hour-long Kingdom Hearts challenge videos, because that was honestly time well spent. Well, it was definitely time spent. But the real mistake was thinking it'd be fun to edit a game that involved a Blood Chief Ascension, a Talion, and an Aloro. All of those changed life totals so much, made my life miserable, but it made for a pretty good game, and I think you guys will probably enjoy it. And if you don't, well, there's two other games after that, so I'm sure there's something you'll like. And if you're sitting there thinking, wow, a video about a Demir commander, I wonder what's gonna win. Well, I promise you, these games don't end how you think. Well, not all of them anyway. Throughout these three games, we showcase what this commander can really do between copy effects, naming different numbers, and even cool synergies with Blood Chief Ascension. So if you're at all interested in this commander, I think you're really going to like this video. And if you don't like this commander, well, we didn't just pick three games where one commander won every single game. So if you don't like them, you can see him get beat to a pulp as well. And if all else fails, if you just like watching us make mistakes, well, this first game had like 17 different life change triggers per turn. And I guarantee you I messed up somewhere. So you're bound to find a mistake that we made so I mean there's really something for everyone in this video but without any further ado or stalling let's get into game number one in this first game I was playing tally on the kindly lord just looking to win through consult and just outvaluing people with this brand new commander Napey went second playing Aloro Ageless Aesthetic which I can only describe as well, it's an Esper deck. Bill went third playing Thalia and the Gitrog monster, which looks to win through just overrunning the board and playing a Witherbloom Apprentice combo line. And Jordan was going last playing Icy, Tyrant of Gyre Strait, just looking to play lands, draw an absolute ton of cards, and then win through infinite turns. So getting started with the game, the first turn was put on hold while Jordan played a Gemstone Caverns for free getting rid of a Pact of Negation. I then started the first turn cycle by playing a Flooded Strand, cracking it for a Watery Grave because I'm too poor for duels, and then played a Mana Crypt into a Ledger Shredder. Nate then went to his turn and played a Land into a turn 1 Esper Sentinel, and Bill then goes to his turn, plays a Wooded Foothills which he cracks for a Temple Garden, plays a Chrome Mox, imprinting an Imp's Mischief, and uses all his mana to cast a Lotho Corrupt Sheriff. This triggers my Ledger Shredder, which gets my Ledger Shredder a plus one, plus one counter. And Jordan then goes to his turn, plays a Prismatic Vista into an island, and then uses both his lands to cast his very own Ledger Shredder. With nothing left, the turn is passed back to me. I win my Mana Crypt, then play a Swamp as my land for turn, which I use to cast a Dark Ritual. With that Dark Ritual mana, I cast my Commander, Tally on the Kindly Lord, which triggers both Bill's Lotho, so he creates a treasure and loses life, and both Ledger Shredders trigger, so myself and Jordan both connive. Italian then resolves, and for those of you who haven't seen this card, this commander will let me pick a number between 1 and 10, and then any time a card is cast of the CMC of the chosen number, or if it's a creature with power or toughness equal to that number, the caster will lose 2 life and I will draw a card. Now in this resolved, I pick the number 2, and I will leave a counter on screen for the amount of cards that I drew off of the number 2, but I'm not going to tell you every time I draw a card because... Well, it would get a little annoying. I then use the rest of my mana to cast a Blood Chief Ascension and then finish my turn off with a Vampiric Tutor. Nate then goes to his turn and plays an Ancient Tomb and taps it taking two damage to cast a Toxic Deluge for five life. This goes off, resolves, Nate passes his turn and my Blood Chief Ascension gets a counter. Bill then goes to his turn, plays a Wooded Bastion and then casts his commander Thalia and the Gitrog Monster using his treasure from Lotho. He then plays a second land for turn, a Gaius Cradle, before passing the turn to Jordan. Jordan starts his turn off by playing a Carpet of Flowers, and then he immediately goes to a second main phase to get a green mana from the Carpet of Flowers, and he uses that to cast a tapped Arbor Elf. He then passes the turn to me. I start my turn off by losing my mana crypt trigger, and then casting a Demonic Tutor. When that resolves, I play a Jeweled Lotus for zero mana, and pass the turn to Nate. Nate plays a Talisman of Dominance, taking 2 damage from Ancient Tomb, and then casts a Soul Ring. He then plays half of the Exquisite Blood combo by casting a Veto Thorn of the Dusk Rose, and he finishes his turn by playing a Castle Lockthwain. Bill, on his turn, immediately casts a Crop Rotation, sacrificing his Wooden Bastion to get an Ancient Tomb. He then casts an Orin Frostfang, taking 2 damage from the Ancient Tomb, and then goes to combat and swings his commander at me. On the attack trigger, he sacrifices his Temple Garden and draws a card. Damage is then dealt, Bill draws from Orin Frostfang, and then wraps up his turn by playing a land. Due to the Ancient Tomb tap from earlier, when Bill passes the turn, the final counter is put onto Blood Chief's Ascension, so it is now online. Just as a heads up, this is going to trigger quite a bit, so just so I don't have to say it over and over again, I'm going to play a little sound effect every time Blood Chief's triggers for those who are just listening with audio. Jordan then goes to his turn and gets a green mana from his Carpet of Flowers and uses this to help cast a Remanap Excavator. He then plays his Prismatic Vista from his Graveyard, Tapped, and he then passes the turn. I again start my turn off by losing my Mana Crypt trigger and I then play a Tapped City of Brass. I then sacrifice my Jeweled Lotus to help recast my Commander Talion, again choosing two as it enters. 
I then pass to Nate. Nate goes to his turn, and due to Aloro existing, he gains two life, and since he has Veto on the battlefield, he chooses me to lose two life. Nate plays a tapped mana confluence, and then tries to shove the other half of his exquisite blood combo. That being Exquisite Blood. He takes 2 damage from Ancient Tomb, and immediately in response to this, Jordan casts a Force of Negation, exiling an Unsubstantiate. With his wind stopped and nothing left to do, Nate passes the turn. Bill goes to his turn and immediately goes to combat, but before he swings, he uses life to cast a Noxious Revival, putting a land back to the top of his library. He then swings all of his available creatures at me, and on attack, he sacrifices a land to draw a card off of the Gitrog trigger. The combat damage is dealt, Bill draws two cards, and in his second main, he plays a Wooded Bastion as a land, and finishes his turn off by casting a Deathrite Shaman. Jordan on his turn sacrifices his now untapped Prismatic Vista for a Forest, and he then casts a Finale of Devastation, X equaling 2. There are no responses to this, and he gets a Lotus Cobra to the battlefield. He then replays his Prismatic Vista from his graveyard due to his Excavator, and he then passes the turn. I go to my turn, winning my Mana Crypt trigger, and then playing a Mox Opal, playing an Ancient Tomb, and then passing the turn. As his turn starts, Nate gains 2, and he makes me lose 2, and he then overloads a Dam, successfully wiping the board of all creatures. He then follows up by casting a Talisman of Progress, taking two from Ancient Tomb, and finishes his turn by casting a Shadow Mage Infiltrator. He then passes the turn to Bill, and Bill, not having any of his creatures available and no real card draw engine, has nothing to do, and passes the turn to Jordan, who does exactly the same thing, which is nothing. Anyway, I go to my turn, I win my Mana Crypt, and I then cast a Soul Ring, taking two from Ancient Tomb, and I then spend eight mana to recast Talion, again naming two as it enters the battlefield. Nate then goes to his turn, gets two life from Aloro, and swings his Shadow Mage Infiltrator at Bill. The trigger goes off, Nate draws a card, and in his second main phase, Nate plays a Forbidden Orchard, and then casts his commander, Aloro Ageless Aesthetic. With nothing left, he passes to Bill, who is able to play a Command Tower as his land for turn before immediately passing to Jordan. Jordan plays Averting Catacombs, which he cracks along with his Prismatic Vista to get a Forest and an Island to cast his commander, AC the Tyrant of the Gyre Strait, and he then passes to me. I win my Mana Crypt trigger on my upkeep and then cast a Demir Signet. I then cast a Phantasmal Image. And when it enters the battlefield, I get a copy of Aloro. Now, for those of you who don't know, Aloro does have extra text because he's not just in the command zone all the time. Whenever you gain life, you can pay one mana to draw a card, then your opponents lose life. When combined with a fully stacked Blood Chief Ascension, it yeah, works out pretty well, especially when he only costs two mana. Before this goes off, however, Bill, not wanting me to draw an extra card off of this, casts an Eladomri's Call, tutoring up a Witherbloom Apprentice to his hand. Nathan goes to his turn, and when he gains two life from Aloro, he pays one mana to draw a card. He then plays a tapped Hollowed Fountain before going to combat and swinging his Shadow Mage Infiltrator at Bill. He draws a card off of that trigger, and in his second main phase, he casts a Preordain. When this hits the graveyard, he loses two life from Blood Chief Ascension. I gain two life and pay one mana to draw a card. With the Preordain resolved, he then passes the turn to Bill. Bill starts his turn off by casting a Toxic Deluge for five because apparently me drawing like three cards on everyone's turn is a little bad for him, I guess. But in response to this Toxic Deluge, I cast a Limb Duel's Vault. In response to the Limb Duel's, Nate casts a Mana Drain, successfully countering the Limb Duel's, but not before I draw a card from Talion, and then draw another card from Aloro when Mana Drain hits the graveyard. The Toxic Deluge then goes off, and the creatures are then all destroyed yet again. This is the third board wipe in this game. With all that carnage finished, Bill then passes to Jordan, who plays a Mystic Sanctuary as his land, does not have enough islands to trigger it, and passes to me. I again win my Mana Crypt, and then just go right back at it by playing an Underground River, and then paying 10 mana to recast my commander. With nothing left, I pass to Nate, who, on his turn, plays a Mystic Remora, a tapped Watery Grave, then he activates Castle Lockthwain, losing 3 life from the activation resolving. Bill goes to his turn, plays a Snow-Covered Plains, and then passes to Jordan. Jordan in his first main phase makes two blue mana with his Carpet of Flowers, and he then casts a Nevzahal Primal Tide, because apparently there weren't enough card draw engines in this game. With nothing left, he passes to me. I start my turn off by losing my Mana Crypt trigger, and then playing and cracking a Misty Rainforest. In response to this crack, Bill plays an Opposition Agent. Now, he's able to look through my library, and also technically my hand, but at this point the only tutorable land I had was an island, so Bill gets a basic island. I then finish off my turn by playing a Fairy Mastermind, apparently forgetting to tap blue mana for it, but I assure you I had plenty of mana. With nothing left, I pass to Nate. Nate pays for Remora and then casts a Crested Sun Mare. He then goes to his end step and creates a 5-5 horse because of course he gained life because he gains life every turn with Aloro. 
Bill then goes to his turn, plays the island as his land, and then passes to Jordan. Jordan starts his turn by making two green mana with his carpet of flowers, and then casting an Allosaur Shepherd. He then casts a crop rotation, sacrificing a forest to tutor up an ancient tomb. He then recasts his commander, and swings Nezahal at me. I take the damage, and Jordan then passes the turn to me. I start my turn off by realizing that Nate has a lot of good cards that I couldn't normally play, but are really good when I'm gaining this much life, so I cast a Gilded Drake. In response, Nate activates his Castle Lockthwain, taking a total of 5 damage between the activation and the Ancient Tomb, and then the Gilded Drake resolves, taking the Crested Sunmare. I then go to combat and swing my Flying Commander at Nate. Nate blocks with the Drake, the Drake dies, and I then pass to Nate. Nate goes to his turn, gains 2, but immediately loses 2 to Ancient Tomb to pay for Remora. He then plays an Island and attempts to clear the board one more time by overloading a Cyclonic Rift. From this, Talion triggers and Nezahal triggers, and I then respond by casting an offer you can't refuse. This causes Remora to trigger, as well as Nezahal and Fairy Mastermind. Unfortunately for Nate, even though there's all these triggers, no one has any answer to my counter, and the Cyclonic Rift is stopped. Nate then casts a Rest in Peace, exiling all graveyards. He then goes to pass the turn, but in his end step, Bill casts a Nature's Claim, targeting his own Crow Mox just to try to gain a little bit of life to survive a little bit longer. Between all the triggers, Jordan and Nate both draw, however Blood Chief's Ascension does not trigger due to the Rest in Peace effectively turning it off since nothing technically hits the graveyard anymore. So, Bill then goes to his turn, and he starts his turn off by casting a Diabolic Intent. There's so many triggers here, a Nezahal, Remora, and a Talion trigger, so a lot of people draw, and Bill loses to life. He then casts a Calling Ritual. Again, Nezahal, Remora, and Mastermind trigger this time. And in response to this cast, Nate decides to sacrifice all of the treasures that he has, floating all of the mana. Still in response to the Calling Ritual, I cast a Fluster Storm, all pointed at that Calling Ritual. This causes Remora and Nezahal to trigger, and in response to the Remora trigger, Nate casts an Enlightened tutor. This triggers Nezahal, but when it resolves, he gets a dress down to the top of his library. He then draws it from his most recent Remora trigger. The Flusterstorm then resolves successfully countering the Culling Ritual. Everyone then draws all of the cards from the triggers that were above that. With nothing left, Bill then passes the turn. Jordan starts his turn off by making three green mana with Carpet of Flowers. He then plays a Command Tower, which draws him a card from his commander. He then plays a second land, a Waterlogged Grove, which also draws him a card. He then casts a Green Sun Zenith for X equaling 5. He takes 2 damage from Ancient Tomb and the Remora triggers, and in response to this, Nate casts a Dress Down, taking one from his mana confluence in order to try to stop everything that Jordan might be doing. At this point, we were pretty scared of a Kodama Corian Ranger line. So in response to the Dress Down, Jordan casts a Spell Pierce. This causes the Remora to trigger again, and in response to that Remora trigger, I cast a Dress Down. This has another set of triggers, a Remora trigger and a Nezahal trigger. In response to the Dress Down, Jordan casts a Veil of Summer. Now, this wouldn't protect him from the Dress Down, but it would protect a future counterspell from being stopped if he did have one. In response to the Veil of Summer, I cast a March of the Swirling Mist, exiling an additional blue card to help pay for the cost to target Allosaurus Shepherd, Jordan's Commander, Nezahal, and Nate's Horse Token. This causes Remora and Nezahal to trigger, and in response to this cast, Jordan casts a Fluster Storm. This, again, triggers the Mystic Remora. But then the Flusterstorm successfully counters the March of Swirling Mists, but in response to the Veil of Summer, I decide to cast a Demonic Consultation. The Demonic Consultation resolves the Remora and the Nezahal triggers go off, and I name Mindbreak Trap. I exile the top six cards of my library, none of them are Mime Drag Trap, and I then continue to exile until I find it. I then put it to my hand, and I then cast it. There's a Remora and a Nezahal trigger, and the Mind Break Trap is finally a spell that resolves, and I choose to exile everything that isn't mine. So I still get my dress down, and I get to draw a card, but everything else off the stack just gets exiled. Jordan then finishes his turn by casting a Wild Growth, which causes Remora to trigger, and he then casts a Null Rod for two mana, again triggering Remora, and then casts his own Mystic Remora, triggering the other Mystic Remora, because again, there weren't enough card draw engines on the table, apparently. He then goes to combat and swings enough damage at Nate to take him out of the game. He then passes the turn to me. I will no longer have my horse, which was kind of my main source of damage, but I go to combat anyway, and I swing 5 in the air at Jordan. I then realize I have a Diabolic Intent in my hand, so I cast Diabolic Intent, sacrificing my very mastermind, and then cast the spell that I tutored for, which was a Windfall. The Windfall caused everyone to discard their hands, which turns out is pretty good when Blood Chief's Ascension is on the battlefield and everyone else is at very low life total. So once that resolves, everyone else discards their hands, takes damage, and I win the game. For the second game, three of the decks remain the same, but Adam joined us this time playing his Jessica Ishai deck, which has an Underworld Breach combo, but really just likes to hit people with Big Bird. 
But getting into the game, I technically start this game off by playing at Gemstone Caverns, getting rid of Windfall. And then the real turn one starts and everyone has a fairly fair opening hand of magic. Adam plays a land into a soul ring into an arcane signet. Jordan plays a land into a mystic remora, which I respond to by casting a vampiric tutor. And then it goes to my turn. I play a swamp and then cast a dark ritual, which triggers the remora into my commander, turn one talion. Again, just all very standard turn one things from all of us. But one thing I do want to note is I, this is my second game playing Talion, and I was thinking I named two all last game. Why not try one? And Adam pulls up his deck list and says, hey, here are the a million cards in my deck that are one CMC. You'll probably get a lot of value out of it. So I try naming one and we'll see whether or not I draw a similar amount of cards this game. But anyway, Nate completes this amazing turn one by playing a land and passing to Adam. Adam plays an island as his land for turn and then casts a phantasmal image. Now he only really has one target, so he copies Talion and despite his insistence that one was going to be really good this game, names two. So I guess we'll see a side by side comparison and you'll also see how easily I am manipulated. Adam then passes to Jordan who pays for his remora and then plays a tapped breeding pool. I then go to my turn and swing three in the air at Nate. I then go to pass the turn and on my end step, Nate casts an enlightened tutor. This triggers my Talion and the mystic remora. However, in response to those triggers, I tap for two mana to attempt to flash out an orcish bowmaster. This triggers Adam's Talion, Adam draws, I lose two life, and then Adam decides to cast Spell Snare attempting to counter my Orcus Bowmaster, which triggers my Talion, so I draw and Adam loses two, and then Jordan draws off for more because that also is a thing that is in this game. And then the Spell Snare resolves, countering my Orcish Bowmaster, the draws all happen, and Nate finally gets to actually tutor. Nate searches up a Well of Lost Dreams to the top of his library, and he then goes to his turn, gains two life from Aloro, of course, plays an island, then plays a Mana Crypt, Jordan draws, and he then taps that Mana Crypt to cast his Well of Lost Dreams, Jordan draws. Adam then goes to his turn, plays the Plains, and then casts a Seasoned Dungeoneer. This allows him to take the initiative and search up a basic land to his hand, and he then passes to Jordan. Jordan lets the remora die on his turn, and he then casts a Growth Spiral. Adam draws. Jordan then plays an Ancient Tomb and then taps it, losing two life, to cast a Rhystic Study. He then passes the turn. I start my turn off by casting a Dothy Void Waker. <laughs> Void Walker. I've been playing too much RuneScape recently. Anyway, with that done, I pass to Nate. Nate loses his Mana Crypt trigger, but gains two from Aloro, and he then pays two mana to draw two from the Life Gain and the Well trigger. He then plays a Vault of Champions as his land and passes to Adam. Adam continues initiative on his turn and chooses to scry two. He then casts Grazalax Illithid Scholar. He then goes to combat and swings the Seasoned Dungeoneer, who has protection from creatures, add to me. He reveals an Ottawara from the Explore trigger. I then take the damage and he draws a card off of Grazalax. He then plays a Man Confluence as his land and casts his own Mystic Remora, paying for the Rhystic Study. I hate this pod so much. Uh, he also loses two life and I draw a card from the Talion trigger. But with nothing left, Adam passes to Jordan, who plays a Forest as his land and then casts his Commander Icy. He then plays a Verdant Catacombs as his second land for turn, drawing a card when that enters, and he then discards due to hand size and the discarded cards go under Dothy. I then go to my turn, play an Ancient Tomb, and I then go to combat and swing Dothy at an Adam. Adam takes the damage and then I get initiative, so I get to search for a basic land to my hand. In response to the search, Jordan cracks his verdant catacombs, but before he can search up a land, I tap for four mana to cast a Notion Thief, taking two damage from Ancient Tomb, not paying for Rhystic Study, and in response to this, Nate casts a Delay, also not paying for Rhystic Study and also triggering Adam's Talion and his Mystic Remora. These draws all happen, the delay resolves, the Notion Thief is temporarily stopped, and Jordan finally gets his basic forest. Oh, and I also get a basic land to my hand, apparently. That happened this turn. With nothing left, I pass to Nate. Nate gains two, and Well of Lost Dreams allows him to draw additional cards, and he then loses his Mana Crypt trigger. He then plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn, takes a damage from Mana Confluence to help cast a Crested Sun Mare. He then goes to his end step, and since he gained life, he gets a 5-5 Indestructible Horse. Adam then goes to his turn, lets his Mystic Remora die, and then swings the Seasoned Dungeoneer at me, re-getting initiative when it deals the combat damage, allowing him to go to the arena, which allows him to goad Dothy Voidwalker. He then draws off the Grazalax, and then plays a Sarah Ascendant to end his turn. Jordan plays a Prismatic Vista and a Tapped Field of the Dead. This allows him to draw two cards from his commander, and also start making tutus due to the Field of the Dead being online now. He then casts an Azusa, taking two from Ancient Tomb, and plays a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx as another land. 
drawing a card, and he then plays a Misty Rainforest, again drawing a card. These both make two twos from Field of the Dead, and he then cracks two fetches in order to draw two more cards and get two more two twos. He gets basic islands with both of these searches, and he then casts a Mana Crypt. He then casts a Carpet of Flowers, which is a 1 CMC card, and he then plays a Trade Route. Now, for those of you who don't know, this pretty much is the combo piece needed to take infinite turns, assuming that Jordan had an extra turn spell and Mystic Sanctuary in his hand. So in response to this, Adam casts a Silence. This allows me to draw, Adam loses two, and then Jordan also draws because of the Rhystic Study. After the draws are done, Jordan casts a Fierce Guardianship, attempting to protect his enchantment. In response to the Fierce, Adam casts a Flusterstorm. I draw a Fatalion, Adam loses two, and the Storm count is six, all pointed at the Fierce Guardianship. In response to all of these copies, Jordan casts a Swan Song, targeting the original Silence. I am able to draw from the 1CMC spell, and Adam then casts a Miscast, again allowing me to draw. And watching this back, I'm now realizing that naming one on Talion might not be the worst thing in the world when you're playing against two control decks. Anyway, Adam pays for Rhystic Study, and before these draws can go off, Jordan, for free, casts a Mind Break Trap, targeting the Miscast and the Silence. The Mind Break Trap then resolves. Jordan then immediately goes to combat and swings Icy at me. I take the damage, and then in his second main phase, Jordan overloads a Cyclonic Rift. Adam is able to draw from this, and due to that draw, he's able to pay a blue and exile two cards from his hand to help cast a March of Swirling Mists, X equals 4. He does not pay for Rhystic Study, and Jordan is able to draw, and Jordan then loses one life to cast a Force of Will for free, countering the March of Swirling Mists. The Cyclonic Rift then goes off, Jordan's opponent's permanents are all bounced back to their hands, and Jordan then passes the turn. I go to my turn, and I take 2 damage from tapping my Ancient Tomb to help cast a Gilded Drake, attempting to steal Icy from Jordan. The Gilded Drake resolves, and I then play a City of Brass, drawing a card, and then play the Sunken Ruins, again drawing a card. Then tap the City of Brass, taking 1 damage to help recast my commander from my hand, this time naming 2. I then go to the end of my turn and discard a healthy amount of cards due to all of the permanents being returned to my hand and drawing all of those cards. Nate then goes to his turn and gains 2 life from Aloro, and he then casts a Mana Crypt, allowing Jordan to draw. He then plays a City of Brass, and he then takes 2 from his Ancient Tomb to replay his Well of Lost Dreams. He then takes 1 from City of Brass and plays Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff. He does not pay for Rhystic Study, so Jordan and I both draw, and he then passes the turn to Adam. Adam goes to the Archives with his initiative and draws a card. He then plays a Command Tower and replays his Soul Ring, paying for Rhystic Study, and then exiles a Simeon Spirit Guide in order to get a mana. He then recasts his Seasoned Engineer, which allows him to complete his adventure, allowing him to put a creature from the top 10 cards of his library onto the battlefield and it gets some bonuses. The Lotho triggers and Nate gets a treasure, and then Adam reveals the top 10 cards of his library, and none of them are creatures. Adam then continues his turn by playing a Phantasmal Image, and when it enters the battlefield, he attempts to copy Gilded Drake. In response to this, not wanting to lose either of the creatures I have, I cast a Mind Break Trap for free, attempting to counter it. I also assume that if Jordan was going to win on his turn, it wouldn't be after three spell casts, so I really just wanted to keep my stuff in case Jordan whiffed. Anyway, the Mind Break Trap resolves and Adam passes to Jordan. Jordan, before he draws, casts a Mystical Tutor, getting a Finale of Devastation to the top of his library. He then, in his first main phase, makes a Green Man with Carpet of Flowers, plays two lands to make two more tutus, and then casts Finale of Devastation, X equaling 10, as his second spell for turn, which means my Mind Break Trap wouldn't have even worked anyway. Jordan gets an shine to the battlefield, and then he casts Quarion Rager, which I guess I could have countered, but then even if the game didn't end, Adam would have my IC, so is the game really worth playing at that point? Anyway, in response to Squaron Ranger, Nate loses one from his mana Confluence to attempt to cast a Dress Down, paying for the Rhystic Study. I draw, Nate loses two, and then the Dress Down resolves. Unfortunately, Jordan just has enough damage to kill Adam and myself, so yeah, the Mind Break Trap wouldn't have done anything. I will continue to be greedy in this game, and you cannot stop me. Nate is able to survive just barely, but at the end of the day, Jordan passes the turn, Nate can do absolutely nothing, and Jordan just untaps. Has his combo online since the Dress Down is no longer on the battlefield, and he's able to just, I think just swing out. Honestly, I think he had enough damage to just win the game that way, and Nate really had nothing he can do, so Jordan then wins the game. Now for game number three, the decks were relatively the same, although we got Bill back in with Thalia and Gitrog, and we swapped out Jessica Ishai for Nap. A summary of this deck is, it's super mean, and makes you never want to play Magic again, and will probably send you off crying. That might just be a me thing, but anyway, this game starts off with Adam playing a Gemstone Caverns for free, since he's not going first, getting rid of a Fiend Artisan. The game then actually starts, I go first, playing a Misty Rainforest, which I crack to shock in a Watery Grave in order to cast a Mystic Remora. Nate then goes next, plays a Polluted Delta, which he cracks to also shock in a Watery Grave, and cast his own Mystic Remora. 
drawing me a card. Adam then goes to his turn and then plays a Twilight Mire and then for two mana just proves my earlier statement right and plays a Chains of Mephistopheles. I forgot that this was turn one. Oh boy. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Bill. Bill plays a Wooded Foothills, which he cracks for an Overgrown Tomb. That might look like a Godless Shrine on his battlefield, but I promise you that it's not. Trust me, it's an Overgrown Tomb. Realistically, he had both of them in his hand and just wasn't thinking and put the wrong land down and we let it slide because also none of us noticed. He then used that definitely real Overgrown Tomb to cast an Elves of Deep Shadow and then pass the turn to me. I decide to let my Remora go to the graveyard because drawing cards of the Chains of Mephistopheles is a nightmare. I then cast a Soul Ring, Nate discards due to Chains, and then draws due to Remora. I then cast a Fell War Stone, Nate again discards and draws, and I then play a Spire of Industry as my land. With nothing left, I pass to Nate. Nate also lets his Remora go, plays a Command Tower as his land, and then passes to Adam. Adam starts his turn off by playing Carpet of Flowers, and then for one mana, he casts a Vampiric Tutor, which tutors a card to the top of his library, and he then passes to Bill. Bill now plays the Godless Shrine that he definitely didn't play last turn, and he follows it up by casting a Jeweled Lotus. He then cracks that Jeweled Lotus and takes one damage from his elves to cast his commander. With nothing left, he passes the turn. I start my turn off by casting Talion, this time naming two. And in response to this, Nate decides to cast an Enlightened Tutor. The Enlightened Tutor resolves and he searches a Mana Crypt to the top of his library. The Talion then resolves and I pass the turn to Nate. It goes to his turn and plays a Forbidden Orchard tapped due to the Thalia and Gitrog. And he then for zero mana plays a Mana Crypt. He then casts a Cabal Console of Allocation and passes the turn to Adam. Adam plays a Tapped Bayou as his land for turn and then casts a Black Market Connections with help from his Carpet of Flowers mana. With nothing left, he passes to Bill. Bill decides to shock in a Temple Garden and then hold up some mana and passes the turn to me. I play an Ancient Tomb, tapped of course, and then take one from my Spire of Industry to cast a Chain of Vapor targeting the Chains of Mephistopheles. Cabal triggers, but the chain resolves and is not copied. I follow that up by casting a Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, copying my Talion since it allows you to copy legendary creatures, and in response to this ETB, Bill casts an Orcish Bowmasters. I'm able to draw from the original Talion, but then the Bowmaster resolves, and when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to Adam's face, and then the Sakashima resolves, copying Talion, and I name one. With nothing left, I pass to Nate. Nate goes to his turn, wins his Mana Crypt trigger, and makes one of the probably saddest plays I've ever seen. Plays a tapped Gemstone Caverns, which is just really unfortunate. A tapped Colorless Land is <laughs> it's just funny. I felt bad for him, and I'm glad it wasn't me. He then continues with his turn by casting a Toxic Deluge, paying one life into the spell. In response, Bill taps his mana, taking one damage from his elves, to cast an Archivist of Ogma. I draw, Bill takes two, and when I draw, the Orcish hits my face for one. The Archivist of Ogma then resolves, and the Toxic Deluge then resolves, clearing the board of all one toughness creatures. With nothing left, Nate passes to Adam. At the beginning of his pre-combat main phase, he chooses all three modes for his Black Market Connections, getting a treasure token, losing a life, drawing a card, losing two life, and creating a 3-2 colorless shapeshifter, losing three more life. He then plays a tapped Undermountain Adventure, getting the initiative and searching up a basic land to his hand. He then plays that land and cracks his newly acquired treasure to recast his Change of Mephistopheles, with help from his Carpet of Flowers mana. Talion and Cabal both trigger, and in response, I Fierce Guardianship the Chains of Mephistopheles, again triggering Cabal. Nate responds by casting an Offer You Can't Refuse, attempting to stop the counter so the Chains resolves, and I then decide to follow it up by casting a Delay, countering the Chains. The delay then resolves, the chains is countered, and Adam passes the turn to Bill. Bill immediately goes to combat, swing his commander at me and his other creature at Adam. On attack, his commander triggers, and in response to the sacrifice trigger, he pays two life to cast Noxious Revival to put Orcish Bowmasters back to the top of his library. One of the Talions and Cabal both trigger, and then that all resolves, so it goes back to the top of his library. He draws the cards, the combat damage is then dealt, Bill gains initiative, and then tutors a basic force to his hand, which he then immediately plays for turn. He then recasts his Orcish Bowmaster, triggering both Talions, taking 4 total damage, and the Bowmasters then resolve and when they enter the battlefield deal a damage to my face. Bill then casts a Witherbloom Apprentice, which triggers one of my Talions, and from that draw, Orcish hits my face again. With nothing left, he passes the turn to me. I start my turn off by playing a Lotus Petal, triggering Cabal playing a Command Tower, and then casting a Demonic Tutor, again triggering Cabal. Archivist of Ogma also triggers, so Bill draws a card, and I've decided that I've been talking long enough, so this game's probably, probably should just end, so I decide to cast a Thoth's Oracle. There are no responses, and in response to the ETB, I cast everyone's favorite card, Demonic Consultation. I name a card that's not in my library, exile my entire library, the Thassa's Oracle triggered then resolves, 
and since I have no cards in my library, I win the game. And here you were thinking you were going to get a handful of games with no consult wins. I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't help myself. We were like six hours into this recording day and I, I needed to do it at least one time.